yes we've been given some piece of information here from which you're supposed to use to find the NPV with the help of a weighted average cost of capital that is work now NPV is a discounting technique that is normally used to test on the feasibility of a particular project that is to test whether a project is worth investing in or not and for that case you will normally be given the required rate of return from that particular investment but in this particular question we have not been given the required rate of return instead we have been given some of the components of weighted average cost of capital so we are going to calculate work from this piece of information to get the required rate of return that is the discounting rate that this particular investment is supposed to be associated with and we are told from the information that Brio and Kevo wants to venture in a partnership of automobile business so they had provided below information for calculating NPV they want to know whether they should invest in this business or not and they will only invest if the NPV will be positive if you find the NPV to be negative it means we can advise Brio and Kevo not to invest now when you talk about NPV or listed by work when we talk about work, we are simply referring to the average of all the costs or the average of all the capital structures associated with a particular business. Now, we are supposed to identify the components for our work. So the components, according to this question, we are told that cost of equity is 35 percent and the cost of debt is 15 percent the weight of equity is 20 weight of debt is 80 percent then tax rate is 32 percent so essentially it means we have two types of capitals here so we have debt and equity so when you talk about equity we are going to have the weight for each as well as the cost associated with each like for equity for debt the weight for debt we are told that is 80 percent while the cost for debt is 15 percent then we have equity weight, weight of equity is 35 percent while its cost is the no, the weight of equity is 20 percent should be 20 percent then the cost of equity is 35 percent but now because we have the element of tax tax rate means this is the chargeable deduction on the value of debt so it means it will be subjected against debt so for us to get work that is the weighted average cost of capital it's supposed to be the weight of equity multiplied by the cost of equity added to the weight of debt times the cost of debt and because the cost of debt we have realized that we have some tax deduction it means that 32 percent is chargeable on debt so it means 100 minus 32 which is actually 68 percent is what remains as the running component of debt in this particular business and that is what is going to give us the discounting factor so it's supposed to be this one times 1 minus 0 0.32 which is the cost of debt in this particular business now we are now talking about NPV first of all NPV refers to the future values it simply refers to the future values 
discounted back to the present values by a discounting factor. Now when you talk about a discounting factor in this case, we are going to use the value of work from our working because there is no required rate of return. So when we discount them back, we are going to get the present value. Now, we are going to have the future values and the present value. For us to get the NPV, which is essentially the difference between the two, it will be the present value of cash inflow minus the present value of cash outflow. And we are going to show that one in our working. Now from this formula, we have now simplified our working. I now want us to fill the tables and proceed to the next table. So the first table here simply refers to the components of capital. First one you have equity. Equity, the weight of equity we are told that the weight is 0 0.2. Its cost is 0 0.35. When you multiply these two to get the weighted cost, it's supposed to have 0 0.0 seven then the other capital is debt we have debt the weight for debt we have 0 0.8 the cost associated is 0 0.15 when you multiply 0 0.8 times 0 0.15 you're supposed to have 0 0.12 but remember, we have the element of the remainder after the tax. So 1 minus 0 0.2, 1 minus 0 0.2 is supposed to be 0 0.68. That will be the cost of debt after taxation. So we have times 0 0.68, we get 0 .8, 0 0.0816. We add it to 0 0.07. Uh, we had uh, plus 0 0.0816, we get a value of 0 0.1516. But now work should be in terms of percentage, which is 15.16%. Now this one becomes our work. So this is the value that we are going to use for discounting in our table. Now the years here we have been given from year 1. I mean, from 2010, so we have 2010, we have 2011, we have 2012, 2013, we have 2014, 2015, and finally 2016. So the first year we have 12,000, second year we have 10,000. Then we have 11,000, we have 12,000 for year 13, then we have 13,000, then we have 14,000, and finally 15,000. These are the, the expected future values. We subject them to the interest factor, actually this formula here. That is the present value interest factor, which is 15% rounded off to the nearest whole number. But now we don't need to work this one because we have been given from the table. Now, the initial cash inflow, which is expected, its present value will be a negative 12,000, the same value, subjected to present value interest factor of 1, not 15%. Why? Because should this partnership of Prior and Kevo decide to abandon the project, it means they will they will forgo. These values from 2011, 2016 will not be realized. Instead, they will forgo the value that was initially invested, which will be a loss. And that is why we indicate in terms of bracket. So this one becomes the present value of cash outflow.
which will subtract from the present value cash inflow, which will be the total of the remaining years. So, from the table, 2011 becomes the second. So, we simply use the table that you have been given. At 15%, for second year, we have 0 0.7. Five six one, then we have zero point six five seven five. We have zero point five seven one six. Then we have zero point four nine seven two. We have zero point four three two three. Then finally we have 0 0.3538. This one you simply read from the table directly. There is no problem from that. So we now have our discounting factors. That is the formulas. So from these, we are supposed to multiply each column with the cash inflows, that is, we're going to have 7,561. Then now we have, we're going to have the second year should be 11,000 times 0.6575. Which is seven thousand two hundred and thirty two point five. Then you go to the next year twelve thousand times zero point five seven one six. We have six thousand eight hundred and fifty two and fifty nine point two. Then you go to thirteen thousand times 0 0.4972 you have 6463.6 we go to the next year which is 14,000 times 0 0.4323 we have 6,052.2. Then we go lastly, we have 15,000 times 0 0.3538. We have 5,302.5. So we're supposed to add all these ones to give us the present value of cash inflow. That is expected so this one plus six zero fifty two point two plus six four sixty three point six plus sixty eight fifty nine point two plus seventy two 32.5 plus 75.61 we get a value of 39 39,471 this one is the present value cash inflow we less present value cash outflow which is an amount of 12,000 for the first year so minus 12,000 we get a value of 27,471 so this is our NPV remember we said NPV should be these are minus the present value cash outflow. So an NPV, which is a positive number, 
we should advise them that they should they should invest in the project because it has a positive return that is the positive npv if you find this video important or helpful kindly subscribe to our channel thank you